I love when my dad saves me special treats he thinks I will like. I love when my mom lets me scratch my nose all over her shoulder, or when she will interrupt people to tell them that I am trying to finish my sentence. What you just seen are some images of Ksenia Biscuit Zadig, a Canadian young girl who suffers from brain disorder cerebral palsy. Although she has a particularly severe form of the disease, she can tend to her personal needs by herself and is now a 12th grader at a high school for normal students in Canada. That is thanks to the love and care of the whole family, especially her mother, Laverne Bisky. And actually, with Ksenia's example, Laverne is passing on the hope to a lot of families with children of CP in Vietnam. And for today, Expelling, we invite you to join the no ordinary journey of Laverne Bisky and her team in Vietnam, starting at the rehabilitation hospital in Hue City. It's in the early morning, and these people are carrying their children to the rehabilitation hospital to meet a long-time friend. Laverne Bisky has come a long way from Canada to share the same struggle with people here, the struggle of dealing with cerebral palsy. Cerebral palsy is caused by an injury to the brain that usually happens during pregnancy or sometimes shortly after birth. CP affects people in different ways because different parts of the brain can be injured. However, it always has some impact on the person's movement and this is because the messages coming from the brain to the muscle are affected. Of those with CP, 28% have epilepsy, 58% have difficulties with communication, and at least 42% have problems with their vision, and 23 to 56% have learning disabilities. For most parents, when they receive a diagnosis of cerebral palsy for their child, they experience confusion and strong emotions. Every parent searches for the best way of supporting their child. For many of us, we dream that we will have a child and we never even imagine that that child would have a disability or would have a problem. And so it's a huge, devastating shock when that happens. And I see that a lot of the Vietnamese parents are in that state of hopelessness their dreams have been shattered, and they haven't yet rediscovered a new dream. Laverne's second child, Ksenia, was born three months prematurely. The doctor told her that her daughter had an 80% chance of having a disability because of the bleed in her brain. She was finally diagnosed with cerebral palsy. It became evident that she would be severely affected and would require a wheelchair for mobility for the rest of her life. Even when we're in the situation where we can do something to make our child's life better, cerebral palsy is a condition that we can't change. You know, it can't be cured, it can't be healed, and so it's, it's, I think we share that pain, whether we live in Vietnam or whether we live in Canada, we're always reminded that it's, that it's incurable and that there's only a certain amount that we can do, and that's hard. Hi, my name is Rita. Despite that, cerebral palsy kids are entirely capable of listening, understanding, and even going to school. Hi, my name is Taylor. Hi, my name is I move differently, but I need exercise like you. I do things differently. 
The English term cerebral palsy is very neutral because it simply means brain and difficulty moving. But when I ask Vietnamese people about the terms that they use, the responses that I get are very disheartening. And I always think if someone said that about my child, I would be so deeply hurt because I know that's not true about her and so it's extremely difficult when I hear Vietnamese people using that word because it is not true of these children and it, it uh, perpetuates the myth that they can't learn and that they don't have a proper role in the family and that they shouldn't be socially included. So, so I, I think it's really important to change the name to cerebral palsy because of what the Vietnamese words represent. As the couple became accustomed to having a child with a disability, Laverne began to see the silver lining and recognize the gift that disability might be. Following the passion for travel, the Bisky Zadik family have found a unique way to celebrate Ksenia's disability. It has led them to the version of an exceptional life. This past summer, my family and I traveled to Vietnam for six weeks. That trip opened our eyes to the importance of simply having a family for children with cerebral palsy and other disabilities. When we were in Vietnam, I had my family around me, which was very helpful. I could not have done the trip without the support of my family. My family does these things because they love me and care about me. This time in Vietnam, Ksenia can join the trip. Instead, Laverne travels with a team of doctors, nurses, social workers and therapists of CP. She herself pays a visit to a local family in Hue City to meet Tao, a three-year-old girl suffering from CP since birth. You're such a big girl. Almost three. Can you come and sit with me? Do you want to come and sit with me? Yes, come and sit with me. Come and sit with me. Yes? Thank you. Ah, there we go. There we go. Hi. How are you? Good you. Such a cutie. This is a beautiful, beautiful little girl. And um, she is really the joy of those parents, but they, they need to let go of their fear about the future, their anxiety, their sense that they didn't do enough or they're not doing enough or they did something um, in the past that, that caused this. It's so much about mindset and it's not related to the child's condition at all. It's completely related to the parent and how they feel about the situation. Oh. She looks just like my daughter when she does that. <laughs> you look just like Ksenia. You just look like Ksenia. Except you know what Ksenia does? She goes, Mama? Do you want to go to Mama? 
You're so cute. Yes. It's okay. Does she have a problem with constipation or does she get a lot of colds, anything like that? And she's unable to stand. Does, does she sit by herself? No? Hi! Hi! Let me take you. Let me take you. Can you sit by yourself? Can you sit by yourself? <laughs> there you go. Oh, look how she sits. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there. And if you put a pillow in front, Look at that. Yeah. It's good because it helps her to learn to sit and to hold her head up. But also then you don't have to hold her all the time. Look at you. Look. How are you? How are you? Hold the head up. Heads up. Heads up. Do you want to play with a spoon? See if you can grab that. Try this hand. Can you? <laughs> Good job. I think I really started to accept my child's condition when I began to experience the joy in my life of helping other people and being able to connect to other families. And I think when I could see that having a child with a disability um, caused me or encouraged me to do more for other people, that's when I began to feel some hope. And that's when I began to accept it. This Vietnamese American young man is also part of the team. Timmy Lee took control of CP by being physically involved with sports. Hey! He is currently second degree black belt in Taekwondo. When I do my kicks, I usually fall. But um, yeah, I fell a lot because when you have to bring your leg up high to hit the target, um, CP and spasticity, so my legs were tight. So I wasn't able to like reach as high as possible, but um, I tried my best and um, I overcame it by just doing my best and just put CP aside and just go for it, really. Timmy is also a 2013 graduate from the Catholic University of America with a degree in biochemistry. He volunteers to go to Vietnam as an example of a CP patient. Hey! I know what it's like having CP, and I want them to realize that even though there's a physical disability that affects them, um, their mind is just so incredible, and if they just have that mindset, they can just overcome the physicals. Together with Timmy, Terry Gajinski had a late onset of CP. At the age of five, he was hit on the head. His brain was damaged and he suffered from CP ever since. Today he comes to Vietnam as a social worker, helping the patients to see the children's gifts and to connect to one another. We associate how the brain, the ability of the brain is how they speak. But that's not necessarily true because people have great ability and not able to speak at times. And many children with CP are like that. So to change that belief that uh, Children with CP can't think or they're useless or they're not going to develop into anything is false. And that's part of uh, using myself as an example to say even if you have CP, there's a lot you could do for society, there's a lot you can contribute, and there, is a, there may be damage to my brain, but there's also parts of my brain that work quite well. And that's the same for every child with CP. 
Chen Jiming Chang, 22, is a model of overcoming challenges of CP. She volunteers to join the team in Hui City to give hope to the parents there. If you watch her get into a vehicle or get out of a vehicle, she's had to work so hard to be able to do that with only a little bit of support. And so she's learned so many things on her own just by trying. But there's also something kind of sad about her that's very typical of children who have cerebral palsy. When Ksenia and I were here in Vietnam last time, we asked her what she liked to do. And she said, you know, I stay at home, at home a lot. And I feel sad because I don't have enough people in my life. And I think what she was expressing was that loneliness and that state of isolation that a lot of people with disabilities live in because the world doesn't understand them. So even though she's accomplished an incredible amount, she can write, she's here independently by herself today, she still faces and she still lives with a lot of the really hard challenges like, like being socially excluded. On this two-week mission in Vietnam, Laverne's team has provided training to 100 families and 40 medical professionals on the management of cerebral palsy. They worked in four locations in Hue and Traving Promises and gave dozens of wheelchairs to the CP patients. Above all, Laverne's inspiring story about traveling the world with Ksenia is the greatest inspiration to all. First accepting and then rising above the disability. Bản thân chị là không phải là người người Việt, à, nhưng mà chị cũng có một cái tấm lòng rất lớn là đã thương được các cái cháu à, bài nào ở đây à, cũng có cùng cái hoàn cảnh của con của chị, một cái sự đồng cảm mà đối với trẻ bài nào. Cái cái thứ hai nữa là nó cũng thể hiện được cái cái sự yêu thương, à, phân không phân biệt cái đất nước. À, mặc dù là không cùng một dân tộc nhưng mà chị cũng đã biết chia sẻ cái khó khăn đó. Và qua cái tin chia sẻ đó thì chị cũng một cái sự nỗ lực rất lớn của chị đó là chị đã kêu gọi các cái tổ chức và cá nhân hỗ trợ thêm cho các cái cháu bài nào ở đây à, nói chung và cái trẻ bài nào đang điều trị của bệnh viện chúng tôi. The best thing that we can do when we're here is to give them hope because it's with hope that they will create a new dream and it won't be the same as the dream that they had originally. It'll be something new and that I think would be the biggest gift that we could give them. So I hope that the story of Laverne Bisky and her family's no ordinary journey has been able to move you as it has moved me and that people's awareness of cerebral palsy kids will be changed. And now let's move on to our segment of Time Out. In this week's episode of Time Out, a host Lana Ingun continue her journey discovering the exciting part of Nha Trang City in the central province of Khánh Hòa. Let's see what she'll be introducing to you this time. In the previous episode, 
Nha Trang Bay features fascinating beaches and islands that are considered a water sport paradise. You will not miss this chance to indulge yourself in the exciting water sports here. Jet ski, parasailing, scuba diving. We get to experience how diverse the marine life here. I feel fantastic. That was amazing. Hello, it's me Lanning and welcome back to Time Out this week. Now besides the spectacular sandy beaches and exciting water sports, Kaingua province also amazes visitors for so many recreational activities. Now in this episode, we'll have a chance to discover the very unique games in Kaingua province that you never know exist. Yang Bay Tourist Park is among the most popular tourist sites in Kaingua province. Located 40 kilometers west of Nha Chan City, the area is known for its renowned Yang Bay Waterfalls, a series of natural waterfalls which lie in mountain ranges and dense primitive forests, characterized by an all-year-round cool climate. The site also attracts visitors with various unique games. The first game is Bottle Feeding Fish. Yeah, you heard it right. Lying right in the park's entrance is a large fish pond, where conventional ways of feeding fish is no longer applied. Instead, tourists get to use baby milk bottles, which contain food inside to feed the fish. Okay, so right now with this bottle, I'm going to uh, feed the fish. I'm pretty curious about how they're going to consume the, the food inside. Come on, come on. Good boy. Much to my surprise, the fish is perfectly happy being fed like this. They sometimes even tap my fingers as if they are asking for more. It may be this intimate feeling of the activity that fascinates children and adults alike. Now, if you think a pig's life is all about eating and sleeping, you have to visit Yang Bay to see the pigs here, which are frequently exposed to exercises to keep fit. And better still, they have all become professional racers. Thế để đua thì mình phải làm thế nào ạ? À, để, để tăng thêm tính hấp dẫn cho cuộc đua thì có 7 con heo trên 7 làn đua. Quý vị anh chị mình thích con nào mình chọn con đó. Hai chục ngàn đồng một con. Nếu con mình chọn người nhất này là quà tặng này. Đây là quà tặng á? À? Đây là quà tặng. Và à. một người có thể chọn nhiều số, nhiều người chọn được trùng số lẫn nhau. Ví dụ như số 3 mà có 3 người chọn, số 3 về nhất sẽ có 3 phần quà giống nhau cho 3 người thắng cuộc. 4 người sẽ có 4 phần quà và nhiều người sẽ có nhiều phần quà. I've never seen a pig race before. This is my first time. I guess twice on who would win, and they both won. Con thích con heo rú ráo vì nó chạy nhanh, như vậy nó đã thắng. You feel more connected to nature, and you get to see a lot of like, wild animals that you wouldn't see in the city. For those who would like to have a bit of a thrilling experience, try the so-called crocodile fishing. Although I myself would rather refer to it as crocodile feeding. There's a large crocodile farm on the site where crocodiles are raised for meat and leather. Tourists get to use big fishing rods with baits trying to fish the crocodile and pull them out of the water. Not many of them succeed though. Con thích trò chơi cá sấu nhất vì khi mà con thả mồi xuống con cá sấu nó đớp khi con giật lên nó đã ăn mồi của con. Besides the crocodile farm, the site also houses an ostrich farm and huge birds are available for riding. For some, the idea of riding an ostrich is not really tempting, for they are afraid that these birds can't take human weight. But in fact, the ostrich bodies are strong and sturdy and can bear weight of up to 90 to 100 kilograms. And ostrich riding is a pretty unique way to travel. I 
I enjoy riding ostrich very much. It feels like I'm flying on a giant bird. At first, I was a bit scared to get on the ostrich, but it's the ostrich smiley face that calmed me down. Riding an ostrich is nothing like riding a horse. An ostrich has only two legs, so there's something more precarious about it. It's definitely one of the most unique experiences I've had in Vietnam. I've never felt this close to animals like this. Crocodile hunting, pig racing, and now Oscar riding. I think I have enough exercise for today. Well, if you have some time, do visit Khánh Hòa Province to take part in these exciting games. Thank you so much for watching Time Out today, and see you in the next episode. Goodbye.